pour out every single ounce of love that I've got left for teddy bears. <laughs> By creating a make-believe bear that is cute and tame, we have made the real bear seem more frightening. It reminds us that we have left the wilderness, that we know nothing of its ways. We look to our furry friend for comfort, even though we know in the thickest forest we are out of our depth. In 1992, a British man was killed in the Canadian Rockies by a grizzly bear. The teddy bear had turned man-eater. Hysteria ensued. Newspapers used the language of horror stories to describe the beast. According to one reporter, the 22-stone rogue animal reared up over him, razor-sharp teeth dripping with its victim's blood. Exactly 10 years earlier, Patricia and Trevor Yance were walking in the Rockies when they too were attacked by a she-bear. I didn't really have time to see the, the bear coming or to crash in the underbrush off to the side. I had time to turn and see a brown blur coming and to half turn away and the bear knocked me down and mauled me quite forcefully. I uh, was biting and tearing and throwing me around. I have a clear recollection of the bear having me by the back of the head and neck and throwing me back and forth over her back like a rag doll. Um, tremendous force. You'd heard me scream, probably. Yeah, I was lying on the ground thinking, this is it, we're going to die. I wonder what's going to happen to Trish. And then I heard your scream and thought, yep, I got Trish too. The bear uh, chewed on my face and head quite brutally, made me think a little bit of a dog with a bone in, in the way that he, uh, she was chewing. Um, I could hear bones breaking, I could hear the noise of, I guess, my own blood. It was a, a slurpy noise, and uh, I got angry because I was not ready to die, and I was not going to die, and I tried to think of what to do. I just prayed over and over again she'd go away, and the next time I looked, she was gone. <laughs> Directly after the attack, I was um, hyper scared of everything. So the idea of going back into the wilderness was terrifying. Um, I, I guess even like the shapes of the mountains, the shapes of the trees, anything c that could evoke those mountain feelings and the, the way it was the day that the bear um, attacked me uh, really got me um, like a gut feeling of terror, a sick stomach, um, uh, the fast beating heart, especially initially after the accident. There's lots of types of hunting, but no hunting can bring the adrenaline rush to the level that bear hunting can. I've never yet experienced a type of hunt where the hair stands on the back of my neck uh, out of sheer fear of knowing what the outset could be. Somehow it's not enough for man to see wildlife in a zoo. It's not enough to be able to uh, look at a picture of a flower. If it was enough, we could provide photographs and then pass them around throughout the country. People could look at the photograph and say, I've experienced the bear. You've never truly experienced the bear until you've met it on its ground, in its domain, and experienced the true thrill and excitement of the fear, of the reality of the wilderness, and all the negative and dangerous and powerful things that the wilderness provides. The bear is supremely important to us still today. It, after all, is that great animal who requires wide open spaces, natural ecosystems, open terrain, wild places, and it's wildness that's disappearing from the world. Also, I think the bear evokes in us something of that, o that feeling we have for being wild, for having come from the wild ourselves, that sense of an interest in risk and excitement in seeing wild nature.
The bear draws more than the hunter out of the concrete city. Day trippers driving into the mountains of North America have long been enticed by the thought of seeing a bear. For most of this century, we have queued to experience him. He fascinates us like something from our past. To reach out to him is to reach back. And as he poses for our photographs, it is with a thrill we remember that he is fierce as well as cute, that he can kill. Yet the bear can find no place in the controlled, contained wilderness that we now like to enjoy. The last bear seen near the Canadian beauty spot of Lake Louise was killed in 1988 because she was a threat to the tourists. <laughs> 